should i start okay okay uh very good afternoon to all and uh, you know today uh, this is uh, the online felicitation uh, of our respected colleague uh, professor veena gupta and uh, just to share one thing because just few minutes back uh, she was telling that she is the only like you know lady to have working lady in the whole family and uh, before i start the session i'll introduce uh, to uh, professor ramesh let me uh, tell you one thing i would like to share because you know there is one school here called saint anne school and i was reading the history of that school and i came to know that girls education in this area was really very difficult and for that that italian some uh, uh, institute they came here for the for the establishment of this saint anne school and you know madam is from this area and it is true that whatever she has achieved is really great in 2006 i have joined and till then if you ask me that the sweetest personality in the department i will definitely remember uh, professor vina gupta lot many times we met in different administrative although we don't belong to same area of research but uh, it was really a fantastic uh, experience for me to work with you and uh, definitely i would like to uh, congratulate you for your successful completion of this a uh, journey of 34 years in this department and i really enjoyed your stories about the first class and <laughs> those memories are really great so uh, let us go directly to the uh, technical session where we are happy to have uh, professor ramesh gardas from uh, iit madras and uh, just uh, i would like to say few uh, like introduction about your career Ram Professor Ramesh Gurdas uh, was born and brought up in Surat, Gujarat. He completed his B.Sc. <coughs> uh, in chemistry and M.Sc. also in physical chemistry from South Gujarat University. He has been awarded the Ph.D. degree in 2004 from Veer Narmad South Gujarat University. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and then he joined uh, iit madras in 2010 as a assistant professor but now he is uh, he has become uh, associate professor in 2015 and uh, he has uh, like a uh, lot of uh, awards a uh, few few of them i would like to mention that emerging investigator in 2018 recognized Uh, and then the hc gaur memorial lecture award arvind kumar memorial award young scientist award in 2016 by academy of science sciences chennai and then institute research and development award irda award in 2015 in the junior level and uh, his research interest is uh, ionic liquids chemical thermodynamics and uh, fluid phase equilibria group contribution methods and structure property correlations uh so with this brief introduction i'd like to uh request uh, professor uh, ramesh to start this uh, his lecture on ionic liquids as environmentally benign solvents for enhancing the sorption and extraction processes professor ramdas uh, uh gardas please yeah, uh, yeah thank you thank you professor kaushik ghosh such a nice introduction and uh, i know it's not easy to talk uh, in a mini symposium for especially for felicitation but uh, i would be happy 
to share some of our results with you on this special occasion. I was listening to madam. Uh, I'm sorry, I supposed to join long ago, but uh, I was engaged in another work, but it was so nice listening. I, I hope I joined at the right time. And uh, she was sharing about her 47 years of association with the department. In my department at IIT Madras, in last 11 years of my stay, I have hardly seen three or four colleagues retirement. Of course, I am going to see in the next decade more than 10 or 15 people are retiring. But it, it, it's a mix of emotional and sharing the views and all these things. And uh, I join, Madam, all with your chemistry colleagues at IIT Roorkee. And on behalf of all my colleagues at IIT Madras, I wish you happy uh, retirement, long life. And... Uh, Hope you enjoy spending more time with your loved ones. And now you have free time to do whatever you love to do. So after with these short words, let me begin uh, sharing our work. I do have a close association, not so close, but I do have a, some association with many of you and uh, many of your colleagues. I could see at least four or five I know very closely and uh, very recently. And our, our two alumni are there. From IIT Madras, and uh, I recall, I think the, it's an international guest house. I I don't remember. It is KIH or what you call. I was there for a short time for a confidential duty in 2014, and I happened to uh, meet only two or three colleagues, but I still remember. And uh, it was very close to I think some what you call uh, the camp, very close to the camp, and we used to hear the fire sounds and everything. Anyway, so I would like, uh, I put my talk uh, more general for, a, uh, let's say, MSc students and the PhD research scholars. And assuming that uh, the large number of the audience are from the mixed field. And just to popularize this field, I use this opportunity. And uh, as the madam's uh, field is very close to one of the extraction and analytical, so I tried to put that as well. But feel free to write to me in detail if you have any questions regarding this to my email. I will be happy to answer. Let me take my pointer. Yeah, so this is my last name, G-A-R-D-A-S at IITM.ac.in. I know I am standing between you and your lunch, so we may not have large time for question answer sessions, so that's why I'm giving my email. I will try to convince in my talk in the later stage, the early one would be why we need to go for a solvent selection, why we need to worry about uh, environment that is in the beginning and the middle I will give what is the uh, ionic, what are the ionic liquids and where they stands internationally. And at the end of my talk, I would try to convince you that if not we replace completely the organic solvents or conventional solvents, can we use these ionic liquids as an additive or in a small quantity? So we can have a same amount of process and product design energies without compromising the final product. Can we achieve with minimizing the toxicity? Well, I'm from chemistry department already. Uh, Professor Ghosh has been introduced and uh, I would like to thank all my students, those who are graduated and uh, all my collaborators and funding agency. Without their support, it is not possible. And of course, the chemistry department of IIT Roorkee, uh, Justin Thomas and all the colleagues who are part of this symposium and made this feasible and chose me as one of the speaker and that to a special speaker. This is a really honor for me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, entire department. I would like to begin with this logo. If you see, start from this deep red and go across the 17 colors to deep blue. Each one belongs to one goal. This is United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Today, if you are going to write uh, international funding project or the very high impact journals, they are asking which goal you are focusing. 
especially sustainability journals if you are going to address your work so it is nice where you are trying whether you are responsible consumption and production you are trying or you are going to try affordable and clean energy or the chemistry has to definitely play a role in other goals as well if one ask me to define what is a sustainable development probably the simplest and most acceptable definition would be any development which is economically viable environmentally acceptable and socially equitable can be called as a sustainable development and nature always follows newton's third law you protect nature nature will protect you we don't care for nature nature will care for you will not care for us so keeping that in mind we have to see now you see the global chemical industry has surpassed 5 trillion us dollars about 5 years ago and the data says that in the next decade or so it will be expected to double because of demand in the industry especially three industries automotive construction and energy well but the chemistry has to play a crucial and pivotal role either minimizing the waste or converting waste into commodity those were the days all the companies and all the researchers both in industry and academia were only known to think about linear economy starting from raw material to the building the products and then distribution and the consumer and then once it is out of use out of service throw it nobody no sector is worried about what is happening after the product goes from their sector to the next but now each one of them whether it is the production stage or consumption stage or recycling stage or waste management stage one need to understand entire profile thorough profile from from beginning to the end and we need to close this loop circular economy is the future of course the challenges are energy associated when you go from one step to other step let's say from waste management to recycling or recycling to back to the production stage so the energy required has to be minimized but the thing is good thing is people have now come up and convinced that yes we need to close the loop whether it is expensive or not that we will address later on we can't keep on generating the waste and into the throw into the uh, at atmosphere if you come to the solvent side the petrochemical based solvent market is huge more than 57 billion dollars and uh, it is growing every year 4% as i told you this is mainly due to the high demand in three sectors automotive construction and energy however due to stringent environmental regulations now both industry and academia are looking for alternatives so mostly people are going for biosolvents or bio derived solvents one such example is here serine though price is high now it is becoming quite popular very very popular in the uh, mark or sigma heritage catalog so much demand this is cellulose derived solvents it is known to be alternative for many many uh, polar and uh, dipolar and aprotic solvents like nmp and dmf and all these things well the cost is a still issue but we can address that later on when we synthesize in the large quantity or we can think of alternative synthetic procedures well people also work on supercritical fluids or eutectic mixtures or deep eutectic solvents or the solvent state solvent less chemistry but today in next 30 minutes or 40 minutes i am going to focus more on ionic liquids and why we need to look for alternative what is this what are these ionic liquids and what is our interest and what could be the future if you allow me to read green chemistry definition during either design or development or implementation of chemical process and product 
we have to either reduce if not completely eliminate both use and generation of hazardous substance so other hazardous substance should not be there neither in the beginning during the course of the reaction nor at the end and that kind of chemistry you can consider as a green chemistry and out of these 12 principles today we are going to focus more on the fifth one benign solvents apart from the 17 united nations sustainable development goals that number one has to focus now on green chemistry principle number also of course there are green 12 principles of green engineering so these numbers are becoming more and more crucial to show that your focus is targeted and you are aware of that if you allow me to divide entire research into three categories according to the phase solid state solution phase and the gas phase probably i would go for solution phase research is dominant over other two may be easy in handling maybe you don't need large temperature like solid state research or large pressures high pressures like gas phase or wherever heating stirring pumping transporting or uniform heat dissipation uh, is required solution phase would be easier having said that the solution phase mostly predominantly consisting of the solvents or volatile organic compounds and due to their high vapor pressure and low solubility they are major contributor for various problems so what we should do we should look for alternative solvents which are not derived from petrochemicals which has low volatility or the negligible volatility and high solubility high stability both physical and chemical and it should recycle any number of times you ask any existing industry to change their process and product design they will not because this will lead so many complication even one optimization step you disturb entire plant will be disturbed so we should look for a, such a solvent which will not lead to other complications and above all any business the primary motto of any business is minimum investment and maximum profit then only it comes customer satisfaction and other things so we need to look for low cost and high yields innovative solvents what challenges we face our choice of, of combination are so we are in different approach in nature once you add cost to to if it becomes of course the third is the solid temperature groups we need like this all like the third one is a polarity but these three things are may be when Target receives. It is going to go for this kind of scale. So then they are industrial. So it will be a very difficult because once it is, it will go the exponential growth. So in the initial stage itself, we need to worry about the health and safety performance or the regulatory classifications and their other properties, especially viscosity, because It, it is the crucial for energy required for the pumping or stirring or heat dissipation and legal controls environmental impact and the availability and the price well if you see the common protic and aprotic solvent if you want to understand their nature we can divide into four stages this camlet top plot is very well known to understand the solvent nature that is basicity versus polarity and we have listed all the common solvents but whereas 
if you come to the right hand side environmentally benign or more friendly or less toxic these regions are more or less empty for example high basicity and low polarity aprotic solvent entire region is empty so we don't have replacement for tributyl amine and triethyl amine which is environmental friendly of course this is a little bit old data but more or less the scenario is same so as a scientist we need to fill this entire spectrum that means we need a large pool acs green chemistry institute has tried to shortlist or to get the targeted solvent out of 272 solvents based on so many parameters which called either flash point boiling point and some properties and some toxicity studies available and uh, they have given color code for this example they have set 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 parameters and out of 172 they got a targeted selected solvents are 13 and out of 13 3 are of the red color code and 7 or 8 are of the green color code so based on our inputs for health safety and environmental score along with the functional groups and physical properties one can tune to their so we can look for if not if you are using this red color solvent why not for this one no the color is for their uh, code whether it is environmental friendly or not the green is the more more friendly red is not at all friendly and the orange and yellow are in between similarly chem 21 of european public of uh, what you call public private partnership company has come up with the six color codes for most of the solvents from highly recommended to green to the highly hazardous deep red and they have divided around 200 solvents and uh, this they have divided by family that is the functional group by flash points by various scores safety and uh, environmental scores and uh, various uh, Uh, recommendations were given with the color code and they do have an interactive website where you can put it in ascending and descending order which will help you to go for more environmental friendly within the same family if you want whether it is amine or alcohol or other thing of course one has to look for other properties as well well is this enough much attempts have been done but not enough because not only the pure solvent we want as i told you the choice of our targets are more and more so it become more and more complex so people have gone for instead of pure solvents binary ternary quaternary and multi component mixtures and when you want to replace this many varieties of the solvents with millions of combinations we need to have a large pool small pool is not enough and one such class of a new solvent and as i told you i am not going to touch supercritical fluid or eutectic mixtures or deep eutectic solvents i am restricting only to ionic mixtures i put a caption here old wine in a new bottle because this is a new class but this belongs to the molten salts which are known from the ages 1914 paul walden was the first one to make a liquid salt ethyl ammonium nitrate and the modern father of this field professor kenneth sedan is popularly known as a rock star of ionic liquid i had a great opportunity to talk with him discuss with him and work with him in the project during my postdoc at queens university belfast he recently expired and his student tom welter who is now at imperial college london his review is one of the best reviews so those who would like to know more about this field i recommend two review articles here tom welton's chemical review paper and kenneth sedan's chemical society review paper of course some more recommendations i will give in the forthcoming slides and this became so popular among industry and academia you will see in the next slides what i am showing but mainly due to the unique combination of property it's not one or two or three good good things about this kind of solvents but it is multifunctional multi talented what we say well 
I put here and uh, I will go ahead. I put one more word here, hybrid salts. We all know generally salts, both ions are inorganic. In this, one of the ion, preferably cation is organic nature and anion is inorganic nature. There are very rare examples of water, but mostly organic cation and all of them are heterocyclic compounds. We do have them uh, ammonium and phosphonium and based, but mostly heterocyclic, large bulky cation, asymmetric shape and all we call it. And anions usually small, halides or tetrafluoroborate hexafluoroposphate. We do have some little bit big, I put here triplet and bistriflamide. But the predominant reasons these kind of salts are liquid Though they have some interactions or various kinds of interactions, but due to this large difference in the shape, they couldn't pack together and leave some void volume. And that's the reason they are liquid. Theoretically, on paper, based on class of various class of cation and anion, millions of ionic liquid feasible. And if you compare with the conventional salts, the melting points are quite low. Melting points are below room temperature or nearby room temperature. And the predominant reason, as I told you, the large difference in the shape of the cation and anion. Of course, there are other kind of interactions also playing a role. I usually ask my MSc students or fresh PhD students, if I take a glass of water and add sodium chloride and dissolve it, can I say it is an ionic liquid? The answer is no. It is ionic solution where ions are surrounded by the solvent molecules, that is water. We are talking about ionic liquids, their ions are surrounded by their own ions and that's the beauty. That's where they possess unique properties and that's where they become multifunctional and that's where they have large number of applications. Having praised so much about this new class of solvent, if some ask, someone asks me, is there any limitations? Two limitations are very predominant, comes to anybody's mind. First one is viscosity. Viscosities of this class of solvents are very, very high compared to organic solvents. Well, there are many efforts are happening, including our own lab, how to reduce the viscosity or how to come up with the IELTS of low viscosity. Work is in progress, but still there is no hesitation to tell that viscosity of ionic liquids are generally large. And you know, as I told you a uh, few minutes ago, viscosity is the very, very crucial property of the solvent, especially wherever uh, heating, stirring, pumping, and transporting is involved. Energy may need more, so cost may go up. The second limitation is the cost itself. Most of the ionic liquids are expensive compared to organic solvents. But there are few which are comparable with the organic solvent and there are very few which might be cheaper than organic solvent if synthesized in the large scale. But generally it is acceptable statement that ionic liquids are viscous, ionic liquids are expensive. To address these both limitations, what we call in Hindi movie dialogue, ek tir do nishan, one arrow two targets. Instead of using them in pure state, why can't we use their aqua solutions or the solutions with organic solvent? Well, somebody may stop me immediately say, well, 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 you are one side talking about replacing organic solvent and now you are telling that make the solutions along with organic solvent. As I told you in the beginning, if we can reduce the amount of toxic compounds or reduce the cost economics or reduce the energies required for the same amount of the final product that is also like adding of the greenness or the environmentally benignness. 
though it is additive or in the bit smaller coin, but still it is good. So all our applications, what forthcoming applications are there, we never try to replace the conventional solvent completely because industry may not accept it. That need thorough investigations and it may take huge time. In, instead of that, we focused more how the conventional organic solvents amount can be reduced for the same quantity of the final product or with the same time or with the same energy calculations or even less than that requirement. And that's where we targeted. I hope I will try to convince you in that in next 15, 20 minutes. About three decades ago, the field started with a very general. Now it has gone to many applications because of unique properties. And uh, SkyFinder shows that more than 50 books, 17,000 patents, 86,000 publications are there in the open literature. Scopus shows slightly less data because of the thesis and book chapters, but still more or less number is matching. And this is the paper, the review paper I recommended published two decades ago and reached more than 11,000 citations for a single paper. That shows the popularity of this field. I highlighted two names, Joan Coutinho from Portugal and Chris Hardaker from UK, that I had opportunity to work with them as a postdoctoral fellow before joining IIT Madras during 2005 to 2010. India is nowhere behind. Much more research happening in India on this field. We are in the third position and there are more than 150 affiliations are working on this field and that's a huge and that is because it is not only for chemistry there are the people who from uh, chemical engineering and material science physics biochemistry environmentalist and pharmacist they are working on this the reason is not surprising it's a very simple wherever the solution phase research is there People are looking for environmental benign solvents and they are trying to replace the solvents or use these ionic liquids as an additives. And this is not only on paper it is good or only for publication or patent or books it is good. It has shown its potential. It has gone from laboratory scale to R&D to pilot to commercial scale. This is one of the IOLA tech company uh, profile. But more details, this is from Mark Schifflet book. Apart from these two reviews, I recommend this book. He was in a, one of the leading company and then uh, left that job and now he joined industry at the University of Kansas, USA. This book published about two years ago and uh, more than 20 pilot points and uh, 28 commercial applications of the ionic liquids already in the market across the globe, mostly in Europe and US and all other places. But if you see, they are used mostly either solvent or electrolytes or as the auxiliary solvent or performing additives. This is what we are going to focus more as an additive. And he mentioned in his book that in the next decade, this number of industrial applications, which is in the reality, are going to be more than double. Because he himself aware of few which are still in the patent or in the pipelines and uh, it, it is not advisable to publish openly, so he could not, but there are many more in the pipe. Well, well, what we are focusing in IIT Madras in the last 11 years or so, we still believe, even though there is a lot of work has done in this field, there is a tremendous opportunity to look for the targeted applications, People say now it is a fourth generation of ionic liquid. The first one, they were only focusing on physical properties. The second one, along with physical chemical properties. And then people tried in the third one about biological properties as well. And today all are talking about all properties, keeping in mind task specific or targeting or the reverse designing or what you call task specific or application specific ionic liquids. So there is much more to learn in still in this field as it started going into the industry, so now it is again booming up. There was the wave, it went so up, then they become valley. They say, no, no, it is only academic curiosity. Then they showed industrial application, now it is booming up again. Well, what we believe, 
structure property relations understanding is very very crucial and understanding their thermophysical profile is very very essential because this data plays an important role when our research from laboratory it goes to the large scale to make the cost effective design and operation plans this data will be an input so many companies are selling ionic liquid but we never purchased for the simplest reason we are going to look for a new class of ionic liquids which are not sold in the market and if we purchase the raw materials and synthesize it would be much cheaper people say the cost will be reduced around 10 times instead of purchasing new ionic liquid purchase raw materials and synthesize and of course this is not a hardcore organic synthesis or a total synthesis or natural product synthesis no. it is hardly one step or two step or maximum three steps either by neutralization or by metathesis or ion exchange one can easily synthesize ionic liquid having said synthesis is damn easy but purification is little bit challenging but the more challenging is handling them most of them are very hygroscopic as soon as you open the vial before you do any measurements it may absorb moisture and most of the properties will affect especially the transport properties like viscosity and conductivity we were successfully synthesized more than 100 new ionic liquids and more than 50 we have reproduced ionic liquids for our own purpose and the thumb rule was when Lewis acidity of the cation source and the Lewis viscosity of the anion source is making a resulting salt which will be most likely liquid. If both are high, it would be most likely so. Apart from this, we need to understand the ionicity that is the Walden plot, the same Walden who was the discoverer of ionic liquid in 1914. He gave a very good relation between fluidity or what you call uh, molar conductivity versus fluidity and uh, the line which passed from the origin is 0.1 molar KCL solution, aqueous KCL solution that is ideal line and that is called to understand how ionic is our ionic liquids whether they are in ionic forms one is to one or they are in the cluster form other than the computational techniques this will help us to understand very simple two properties viscosity the inverse of viscosity is fluidity and the conductivity divided by molar, molecular mass that is a molar conductivity well after purifying and characterizing we studied their various thermophysical profiles like acoustic volumetric transport refractive calorimetric and the derived properties and their solubility phenomena like liquid liquid wave or uh, solid liquid equilibrium and recently we started vapor liquid equilibrium all these data are very very essential as input parameters for the process and product design involving heat transfer, mass transfer, fluid flow and separation. If you recall, few slides ago I said theoretically millions of ionic liquid feasible. And we don't have such a manpower or such funds or such time to synthesize all of them. So we need to rely on some models or relay correlations. So we systematically choose some family of uh, cation source and uh, judiciously we change anion source and we choose alkyl chain length very judiciously and with this certain number of amount of data we do develop qspr quantitative structure property relations or group contribution methods and this will helpful to have a reasonable prediction of unsynthesized or the new compound which do not have existed yet and this will help in the predictive also to validate available models and i put some instrument which are some are in our uh, laboratory some of them are in the common facilities in the department and in the institute and some are with the, this one but if you see everywhere i put some accuracy any analytical data when you present or any data for that purpose any research data you present there it is associated with some error error free data is impossible whether it would be instrument error or human error or even purity of the sample. So any data we present, we must present in significant digits and we must aware of the errors associated. I'm happy to announce more than 15,000 data published in open literature from our group has been thoroughly verified for their purity check or for 
claimed uh, claimed uncertainty uh, test and the NIST IUPAC uh, IL thermo database has been included this data. Well, I hope I can take 10 minutes to take you to some of the applications. Our core strength is designing star specific ionic liquid for a targeted application and all these applications are with the collaborations. Now onwards, I'm going to show all the collaborative research where the ionic liquids are synthesized, designed and studied properties in our laboratory and check the application in the collaboration with chemical engineer or metallurgy or mechanical engineer or a physics or a biotechnology or within the chemistry department, either by electrochemistry group or a photochemistry. So let me take a couple of examples. First one is industry academia collaboration from Oil India Limited, where we need to address the tank bottom sludge, where the conventional toluene and decane were unable to dissolve and the patented amounts were there, surfactants were unable to dissolve. How ionic liquid play a role? So we asked them uh, what you call asphaltine, uh, asphaltine uh, resin, which is only 7% is responsible for holding up large amount of aromatics and allophytics. So these are the reason which is not allowing them to dissolve in the conventional solvents, which are toluene, heptane, decane, and so on. So what we took, we took 1 is 200 tank bottom sludge to the conventional solvent, let's say heptane, and dissolved it with the room temperature and uniform stirring. We also took the energy calculations into the uh, consideration so the minimum amount of stirring and at room temperature and then we want to see what could be the role of ionic liquid can we attack this resin or asphaltine and make them to release aromatic and aliquid? so this is only 0.1 by mass we have added so the additional dissolution due to the ionic liquid alone the top part can be uh, quantified by UV visible spectrophotometry and the bottom part where the concentration is gone down, we try to understand by IR and NMR. And these are the results. The zero is tank bottom slug dissolution with the conventional solvent, let's say toluene. And after that, this result shows by adding 0.1% by mass of ionic liquid. We got extremely surprising results more than 60% enhancement has been observed for various solvents and various ionic liquid. The BMM PF6 was the best and the toluene was the best solvents. And the same results we also confirmed in the bottom phase where you can see stretching frequency and bending frequency around 1450 and 2950. The black one is only tank bottom sludge. The red one along with the organic solvent, toluene, let's say in this case, and the green one is after adding ionic liquids. And we also checked with NMR. This is the neat tank bottom sludge. This is after dissolving the remaining uh, residue in heptane. This is in heptane and this is after adding. This. So all three studies confirm that, yes, it is enhancing. And we wanted to show the mechanism Though in-depth spectroscopic analysis and computational technique may help, but our project was getting over. So we proposed the lone pair on the heteroatoms of the asphaltic. This is not an exact asphalt structure, but it is a model just for a plausible mechanism. It is attacked by, we don't know whether it is anion, we, be, we believe mostly anion or maybe cation also. So we just put iron. And making these res uh, resins not to bind so strongly with the saturates and aromates. So the remaining work is done by the solvent that is toluene or heptane. So these saturates and aromatics can easily dissolve. Well, this is another application where we want to mimic the tertiary flooding. We know the crude oil, when it comes up, it's own naturally, it is called primary flooding. The secondary flooding is through hot water or steam. 
after that also a large quantity more than 20 25 or 20 up to 30 percent of the crude oil still remained under earth so we wanted to mimic this with the uh, uniform size silica bath and uh, one pore volume is acceptable that is one pore volume is 100 ml so 100 ml crude oil we passed through at certain temperature and pressure we maintain that and whatever it comes out it is called natural or primary flooding then one one pore volume of hot water this same temperature will pass through whatever it comes out of the secondary flooding and after this two flooding is over the third one flooding is optimized in the water with the various conventional salts polymers and surfactants so after this third flooding the best result is 52 percent so still 48 ml or 48 gram of crude oil is still in the reactor so in the third one the third recovery we have optimized one we took and we added 5000 ppm of ionic liquid so the third one we replaced with the optimized one with the new one additionally having 5000 ppm of crude ionic liquid and we achieved this overall three recoveries 52 percent becomes 72 percent 20% enhancement from the small quantity of ionic liquid about 5000 ppm are very very promising results and we proved that in for various class of ionic liquid various conditions of course the conditions are mimicking for the same temperature of the reservoir like 353 we have studied well now we need to understand the reason the reason is very simple the contact angle between crude oil and the rock and the interfacial tension between the large phase that is the water and the crude oil so contact angle we have not measured but in the literature it is clearly showing but interfacial tension we did measure the blue one is uh, water and crude oil and by adding a small amount of ionic liquids in our case around 0.5 weight by weight percent the interfacial tension is going not even half it is going even quarter 60 percent reduction is and this reduction in interfacial tension is the predominant reason for enhanced oil recovery well uh, i think uh, justin i am running out of time i may take two three more minutes if you allow me please go ahead please go ahead yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Professor Ghosh. No, yeah, no, I will problem. take maximum five minutes. Maximum five minutes. Sorry, no sorry. Yeah. So we were working on another application from IG Car Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, Kalpakam, nearby Chennai. And in this nuclear high-level liquid waste, small amounts of lanthanides or actinides or the radioactive compounds are impurity, mostly in uh, aqueous nitric acid solutions or a uh, large amount of water and uh, this is a problem they need to take into deep sea and bury in the drums and uh, we have to do all the prediction and calculations that even after 50 100 years no nothing can happen and this is very very expensive forget about can we reduce the extracted lanthanide and antonide but how we can reduce the amount of high level liquid waste after generated in less number of drums or concentrated way that is quite challenging and uh, conventional glycolamides they use conventional solvent they use dodecan as a diluent they use the uh, glycolamides diglycolamides <coughs> as a neutral extractant so we were thinking can we have ionic liquid of these glycolamides and we choose aliquid based ionic liquid the only reason is in molecular diluents the solvation is or uh, the extraction is most in solvation mechanism but if we have a salt, it may add cation exchange and anion exchange as well. So keeping that in mind, we have prepared aliquid based ionic liquids. And uh, we have got the results have been partitioning of uh, this lanthanide and actinide used by what you call sodium iodide uh, scintillation detector, which researcher are not allowed only the technicians can measure but we could see we were seeing through the glass window and all these things it's very 
very interesting to see this uh, how they do this distribution calculation where radioactive material even in the trace amount is there how much to us my student and me to see that what we saw this results the bottom one is conventional dichloromides with dodecane and toluene this is in the logarithm scale distribution ratios Threefold enhancement has been observed at the low concentration of the nitric acid by adding small amount of ionic liquid in the same extractant and the same solvent. Dodecane, or let's say this square become triangle. You see this by adding ionic liquid, and this was very astonishing results. Of course, we also checked with the various way of functionalized ionic liquid or anchored resin ionic liquid and the mutual separations, though the results were not so promising in most the case, but we tried to understand and it was helping compared to the conventional way. We tried to understand their absorption isotherm and we derived where one is to three moles are required. And uh, I know I'm skipping the slides. Uh, we are also looking for mutual separation of ionic liquid, but it was the initial results was very, very interesting and many people now started working on this. Those who are in especially nuclear industry and BARC and atomic research and all these things. Quite promising. We had an Indo-Spanish project on uh, solar vapor absorption refrigeration system where we were looking for the solvent to absorb ammonia in at uh, room temperature and the temperature of entire system and the solvent should raise by sunlight and uh, sun energy and then desorption should happen there. So we had so much targets to look for ionic liquid and it should not be corrosive. And here viscosity is a very, very crucial and decomposition temperature is very, very crucial. These two parameters are always contradicting. Like when we go for a protic based ionic liquid, you do have a very good thermal decomposition temperature like 250 or beyond. But when you go for protic ionic liquid, viscosity is very, very low but the decomposition temperature will also go down. So we have to compromise between these two parameters. And uh, we were not successful in this project, but what we saw in the literature, there was the group with one ionic liquid ammonia results published. And there was another, this is uh, from same that uh, Mark Schifflet group from USA. And there was another Chinese group where they published with the water. So we got an idea, can we use water as a co-solvent here and see what will happen? We, we didn't do experimental work, but we have done Aspen Plus using uh, equation of state and NRTL model. And we were successfully presented. We were the first one to present without compromising coefficient of performance much. Conventional lithium bromide water systems can be replaced with the ionic liquid system along with the water as a co-solvent and uh, can be have a very good vapor absorption refrigeration system. However, circulation ratio is high. Circulation ratio high is means the setup, the size of the equipment will high. We can, one can work on that. Anyway, let me skip my couple of slides or let me go to the end. We also work on aqueous biophysics systems where we extract uh, model bio compounds from uh, one phase to other phase and both the phases are uh, water rich due to the difference in uh, relative affinity and the solubility of the targeted compound they prefer one phase. so shifting of one phase to other phase we have tried with various ionic liquids and systematically we understood their relation with the polarity and uh, how the Hofmeister series is helpful, which was there for protein stabilization, same series is applied, how charge is playing a role. And instead of cation and ion separately moving, can we have a zwitter ions? And all these results we have explored for the, uh, what you call extraction of uh, some common amino acids, alkaloids and dyes and pharmaceutical compounds. These are not the actual uh, field compounds, but it's a model compound, so we have generated with ourselves, it's called model fluids, but these results will definitely help to mimic or to get the idea of the actual field compounds or the pharmaceutical waste or the bio waste. Well, 
it is not so simple one has to go for understanding details of van der waals interactions electricity interactions or pi pi stacking we do have some understanding based on the structures and pi pi stacking and hydrogen bonding and most of the time it works and uh, sometimes when it is not work we need to go deeper into spectroscopy or the computation models let me skip some other applications what we are working on desulfurization or co2 absorption we, we all know monoethanol amines are so far the best absorbent absorbance for co2 but the only problem is desorption cost so whether ionic liquid research will help to minimize the desorption cost that's where we were focusing and uh, we do have a collaboration with the electrochemist for the battery and supercapacitor and ion sensing and uh, future we definitely would like to work on this now the pcb waste is the biggest challenge now most of the people are using smartphone tablets and uh, especially in this pandemic e waste is becoming so much problematic so the very small quantity of uh, uh, metals present there can it be useful to extract of course people know that aqua regia used and that is not environmental friendly so uh, without using the harsh solvent can we extract there are some literatures but not much and i hope i try to convince you that instead of replacing completely we can still think of using ionic liquids as a performant additive to boost the applications and uh, our core strength Professor Ramesh, hello. It's okay. Hello, Professor Ramesh. Hello. No problem. The electricity has gone. Oh. Uh, right? Okay, okay. No problem. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So I will conclude my slide here. No problem. You can go ahead for the next. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'd like to uh, thank you, uh, Professor Ramesh. Okay. He want to you want to continue? Please go ahead. No, no. I have. Uh, Talk is over. I, I can happy to if somebody has anything, either suggestion. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. So if uh, uh, any question is there, uh, the students uh, can ask uh, Professor Ramesh. You can write in the chat box also. Or uh, you can uh, write. These, you can ask now, or you can write in the uh, email to me also later. It is fine. Yes, yes, yes. No, we are uh, trying to check the chat box. Uh, is there any yes, question no. there? Okay, okay, okay. So, if not, in the meantime, can I ask you uh, one small sure. query? Sure. So, no. uh, it, it was great to hear uh, about the utility and the importance of this ionic liquid because, you know, we are talking about energy, environment and health these days. So I think uh, this is a very interesting talk and uh, the talk of recent, you know, interest of. So my query is uh, how to choose a particular ionic solvent for a particular reaction or any kind of catalytic activity. Yeah, so uh, it's, uh, first of all, this is an excellent question. And uh, the thumb rule says, uh, even though when we say GTBR, trying to replace the targeted solvent, if this is the case, mm -hmm. what is the quality of the solvent and uh, what is the uh, basic nature of the solvent, let's say either CKA or PH, 
or other functional groups. So okay. That can be work as a thumb rule, and we can choose some similar kind of chemical and physical property as a solvent, as an ionic liquid in the synthesizing or while selecting their cation and anion source. This okay. is one way of going. This is one way of going. And the second way, we already know uh, what what kind of ions, whether it is cation or anion side, will give either properties or the hydrophobicity or the hydrophilicity. For example, when halides are there as an ion, mm -hmm. the ions, it would be very viscous yeah. either on it or the gel. That's mm -hmm. the viscosity type. And they are most towards hydrophilic or water loving. Okay. Whereas, if you go to the anion from uh, halides to epitate, viscosity will reduce drastically and still they are water loving or hydrophilic. But if you still go to this triclamide or the chrysalate, that will become, uh, 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 what do you call, extremely low viscous, and okay. the entire nature will change. So there are thumb rules, that is one way of going, and the second way of going, what you want to replace, their chemical and physical properties match with the, our target anion. Okay. 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 Thank you, Professor Ramesh. Uh, and uh, if there is any question, because there was some power problem in uh, Professor Ramesh's end, so uh, we are unable to. I I hold his uh, mobile phone so that he can hear the question. If you have still any query, one or two quick query, you are most welcome. Before anybody asks, I know one of the most uh, what you call most popular question. What I get from the many people. Uh -huh. is, uh, what is the toxicity of iron? Toxicity, okay. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I'm telling because nobody is asking. If other questions are there, I will be happy to answer. No. <laughs> okay. So I I happened to listen to Professor Robin Rogers, who is a well known guy in this field from Alabama. In one of the ionic liquid conference, he told indirectly. We all know that benzene is an organic solvent and benzene is a carcinogenic. But we can't combine both statements and tell that all organic solvents are carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the field has become so vast and so many varieties of ionic liquid came up. So any general statement is not advisable. Please stop telling that all ionic liquids are green or stop telling that all ionic liquids are toxic. So one has to definitely see their toxicity profile, either octanol water potential coefficient or LC50 or similar other toxicological profiles. Well, one can have some idea if the, both the starting compounds or all the starting compounds involved in the synthesis of ionic liquid are green or environmental friendly or non-toxic. Obviously, we believe that the resulting ionic liquid will be non-toxic. So people come up for that purpose, they go either amino acid as anions or uh, or very, what do you call, environmental, what do you call, uh, bio-derived material size as well. So this is what they do. Okay. Okay. So thank you, uh, Professor Ramesh. Uh, and on behalf of uh, Department of Chemistry, I would like to thank you for sparing your time, your valuable time. and. Uh, uh, like I would like to hand over the mic to Professor Justin Thomas. Professor Justin Thomas. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Professor Ramesh Gardas. Uh, it's a yeah. It's a, yeah. It's indeed a pleasure to host you in our department for a special talk. Mm -hmm. And it's a very short notice, despite you had other commitment, you agreed to, you know, participate in this event. And it is indeed a honor to our department as well as to Professor Bina Gupta. Um, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, good, good. It's nice to know this one. So, 
Uh, yeah, thank you very much. So I would like to formally close the session by thanking to uh, particularly Professor you know, Bina Gupta students who are you know, very much supportive and encouraging me to organize this function, uh, Felicitation Symposium, even though it all happened within a week. Uh, the you know students were all helpful and particularly her colleagues are you know classmates who have done MSc along with her in IIT University of Roorkee time. They were also very supportive, and my own colleagues who were very instrumental in organizing this event. So I thank all, including the speaker, for the grand success of this event. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Professor.